I'd like to welcome you all for coming. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I have the pleasure and honor of introducing our speaker today, Dr. Po Yi Hung, um, and his talk entitled, uh, Placing Tea, Mobility, Territory, and the Agri-Food Transfer Between Taiwan and the Southeast Asian Highlands. I was fortunate enough to work with Dr. Hung as a fellow graduate student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's currently an associate professor in geography at Taiwan's flagship university, National Taiwan University. He received his PhD from UW-Madison with a major in human geography and a minor in cultural anthropology. Prior to his PhD, he earned two master's degrees, one from Yale in social ecology of development and conservation from the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, and the other in environmental planning uh, from National Taiwan University. As we will see, his research focuses on nature and society relations. More specifically, he examines agricultural practices and food trade as a lens to investigate the relations among people, place, and environment, drawing on research conducted in Taiwan and China. So without further ado, let's please welcome Dr. Po Yi Hung. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kara, for this wonderful uh, introduction about me. And yes, I'm Po Yi Hong, uh, associate professor uh, from the geography at National Taiwan University. So I came all the way from Taiwan. So, uh, <laughs> it's a great honor to be here uh, to tell you the tea story of, of Taiwan. So um, at the same time, actually, I, I, I am also appointed as uh, uh, Louis East Asia Fellow at the National Humanities Centers at um, you know, Durham. So that's, that's the reason I can come here to share my stories. And it's an ongoing book project. And I'm also happy to announce that I have just assigned an advanced book contract hey! with uh, the University of Washington Press. So hopefully, this talk and this book will be released and be accessible to you guys in one or two years. Okay, okay so uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I will first give a short introduction about the tea species in Taiwan. Then I will give an overview of my book with the book chapter outlines. Then since it is not possible for me to address the whole book, I will mainly tell the story about the tea movement from Taiwan to North uh, Thai borderlands and to Vietnam. And last, I will end with the conclusion. So um, I'm sorry it's, it, it's in Chinese, but basically there are two major species of tea in Taiwan. One is called Camellia formensensis, uh, which is the original species growing in Taiwan as um, shown in the left hand side of the picture. The other, as the major species for tea production worldwide today, is called Camellia sinensis. Okay. However, in Taiwan, the main variety of the Camellia sinensis is the small leaf variety. So in Chinese, we call it xiao ye zhong, as shown uh, on the right hand side in the picture. So the small leaf variety of tea is different from the large leaf variety. So the lar large leaf variety you can see in India. Sri Lanka. Okay, so uh, as the map shows here, the small leaf variety of tea originally came to Taiwan from Fujian province of China during the Qing Empire and then migrated to Southeast Asian highlands, including Yunnan in Southwest China and North Thai borderlands and Vietnam, mainly since um, the Cold War era. Today, tea produced in Southeast Asian highlands also go back to Taiwan to support the tea industry in Taiwan. So in accordance, the storyline of my book is to follow the migration of the small leaf variety of tea to see how tea has been placed to and from Taiwan. So by tracing the tea migration to and from Taiwan, I aim to highlight three domains of place making mobilized by T. So let's see the next slide. So as such, I therefore situate T in three domains, categorization for resource frontier, legibility for territorial control, and exclusion for bordering work. 
For categorization, I argue that T has initiated a frontier dynamic to reconfigure the social relations within ethnic minorities and to reorder the ethnic relations between Chinese Han and ethnic minority groups in Southwest China. I take the value production of poor tea specifically from Taiwan to Yunnan as the empirical data to address it. Second, as for legibility, I argue tea has been a political force for the Thai government to secure its northern borderlands for securing and realizing its state sovereignty. I use the Wulong tea transfer from Taiwan to North Thai borderlands as the case study to convey the story. And last, I reconsider the power of exclusion through the localization of agri-food production and consumption with the politic of bordering. So uh, for that, I use the case of bubble tea. I hope you guys enjoyed the bubble tea from Taiwan. <laughs> and, and, and the tea trade between Vietnam and Taiwan to illustrate how bordering process around local food products can be simultaneously porous and fixed. So I have conducted field research in Yunnan, Southwest China, Thailand, Vietnam, and Taiwan since 2007 with uh, multiple research projects. Based on the data regarding the interactions among ecological changes, market force, state intervention, and farmers, I intend to understand how tea as a non-human actor has mobilized the interface among frontier, territory, border, and mobility. So actually for poor tea at Yunnan, Southwest China, I have published a book already, the tea production, land use politics and ethnic minorities, struggling over dilemmas in China's Southwest frontier. So in this book, I argue that Taiwan has reforged the market value of poor tea. Then the poor tea industry has reconfigured both the spatial and social relations in China's Southwest frontier through the dilemmas between tradition and modernity, between primitive nature and civilized culture. So actually today, my current book project is mainly about, you know, cases in Thailand and Vietnam. Based on what just mentioned, I come up with a tentative book uh, chapter outline. Um, so I cannot tell the whole book. So I would like to address the story about the tea migration from Taiwan to North Thai borderlands and to Vietnam, mainly with the two chapters highlights here. Okay, for the Thailand part, it will be chapter one, Taming the Borderlands. And for the Vietnam part, I will focus on the chapter six, the dilemmas of bordering authenticity. So first, let's go to the Northern Thai, Thailand chapter. Maybe for many people here, including you and me, the first impression of the so-called, you know, golden triangle is the opium production and the landscape of poppy seed plantation with the beautiful poppy uh, flowers, just like the picture shows here. Indeed, the Golden Triangle, the border area crossing Thailand, Myanmar, and Laos is still one of the major places of opium production today. But the production center is now in Myanmar, not in Northern Thailand. So if the poppy seed plantation has mostly disappeared in Northern Thailand, what does the landscape look like today at North, North Thai borderlands? Let's see, next slide. Okay, so this is what the border landscape looks like at Northern Thailand today. Most of the land use is for cash crop plantation other than opium plantations. So including tea, coffee, tropical and subtropical fruits like lychee, plums, peaches, and so on. As the picture shows, you can see so many Terence tea plantations at North Thai border area. Interestingly, many of the cash crop plant planters or business runners there are Chinese diaspora, or more specifically, the Yunnanese Chinese. So why is that? Let's go to the next slide. So things have to go back to the time during the Chinese Civil War between the nationalists or Kuomintang in Chinese, or KMT in the abbreviated version, KMT, okay. So the civil war between KMT and the communists. After the year of 1949, 
when the nationalists or KMT were defeated by the communists, a group of the KMT soldiers, most of them were Vietnamese, retreated from Yunnan to Myanmar and then to North Thai border area. The KMT then retreated to Taiwan and became the ruling authority of Taiwan. So from the picture here, if you can read Chinese, they hold a flag, you know, the, the national flag of Taiwan here with the sun, okay? Also, you can see the Chinese word, if you can read that, it's, it says fan gong, which means anti the communists. Hmm. But are these Vietnamese soldiers still soldiers? Let's see, next slide. So the KMT soldiers have dropped their weapons to become farmers today. They are tea planters, as the picture shows, coffee planters or fruit planters. Some of them have become businessmen or even like entrepreneurs to run big companies, especially tea businesses. Today, North Thai border area has been the major tea plantation area in Thailand. So in this chapter in general, I'm trying to shed light on the process of turning these alien Chinese soldiers into the farmers of Thai citizens. I ask how agriculture has played a role here and how the superficial agricultural process, tea in particular, has actually been a political process for the Thai government to secure its border and to articulate its border area with the regional market economy. So of course I use tea as the epitome to illustrate this process. So this map shows the villages of the Yunnanese Chinese and North Thai borderlands. You can see most of the villages represented by the black dots are located along the border or near the border. Um, my field research is mainly at three sites. You can see from the map, map here. So number one is called Piera Pride, two is Mesa Long, and three is Huawei. These three sites are all the major tea plantation sites in Northern Thailand today, and they are all located at the province of Chiang Rai. So in fact, most of the agriculture you see in Northern Thailand, including tea, has been transferred from Taiwan. Of course, it was a political process behind the agricultural transfer, which I will address more later. Taking tea as an epitome to tell the story here, I am to argue that tea has been an agent to transform the so-called murky border landscape into the legible territory, uh, as in political scientist James Scott's term. So take a look at the picture here you can see the juxtaposition of three kinds of landscape here. One is the forest, right? And then the slash and burn land use in the middle. And last at the bottom, you can see the, the, the tea plantations. So before the agricultural transfer from Taiwan, most of the landscape you may see could be forest and the slash and burn landscape, which have no specific property rights and locations. Tea is different. Tea plantation have legal ownership and specific area and location. So two parts to talk about the tea. First, tea as a transplanted crop from Taiwan has been a key element for the Thai government to enhance its political control over the borderlands. And second, tea as a cash crop has been a key role to connect the North Thai borderlands with the changing market economy. So why is that? For tea as a transplanted crop, I argue that it has played an important role to turn the borderlands from the disorder of battlefield to the order of tea mountains. Before the tea or the other agriculture in general transferred from Taiwan to North uh, Thai borderlands, you know, the North Thai borderlands have been a battlefield which is not thoroughly controlled by the Thai government. Two main reasons for that. One is the black market of opium production. And two, especially during the Cold War era, is the spread of the armed communists at North Thai borderlands. So the Chinese diaspora of the KMT soldiers were deeply involved with both. As mentioned, these Yunnanese soldiers had close relations with KMT which retreated to Taiwan as the ruling authority after the Chinese Civil War. 
Thai government somehow requested the government of Taiwan to deal with these soldiers. In addition, the KMT government in Taiwan and Thailand actually broke their diplomatic relation in 1975. So Taiwan then used the transfer of agriculture as a way to keep the connection with Thailand. Therefore, Taiwan has ac actively participated in the so-called Thai Royal Project, which has helped the Thai government to erase the poppy seed plantation and to replace the opium production with other kinds of cash crops. At the same time, starting from 1980s, the Chinese Association for Relief and Unsuing Services based in Taiwan, although its name is Chinese Association, has sent many agricultural specialists to transfer the crops and plantation knowledge specific for the KMT soldiers and their descendants in Northern Thailand. So a variety of cash crops, including fruits and tea have been of course transplanted from Taiwan to Northern Thailand at that time. So you can see the picture here, okay, the tea plantation. And you know, the uh, Taiwanese tea expert is the one with the white shirt. Uh, you, you, you can see his back. He is now still a professor in National Taiwan University. Yeah, but he re refused to show his face, so I did not. <laughs> okay, so, uh, but the, you know, on the other side will be all of the KMT so soldiers. Okay. So also, the construction of roads. Okay, so uh, you you can see here, like the um, on the left hand side, we can see the construction of terrace uh, of the ter terrace tea gardens, the tea plantations. So they had to like clear up all of the forest first to plant the tea. So on the right hand side here, they also needed the, the construction of water tank to ensure the water supply for the tea. They also need the factories, electricity, so on and so forth for producing oolong tea. And in general, it's a kind of, a, you know, modernization of agriculture at Northern Thailand. Also the construction of the roads was imperative in order to transform more forest lands into terrace tea gardens and to transport both people and tea products in and out. So as a result, I argue, tea as a transplanted crop has transformed the border landscape at Northern Thailand from the disorder of the battlefield to the order of the tea mountains. Clearing the forest land into the terrace tea gardens had made the landscape more visible to human activities. Also for the Thai government, they also received much more detailed land information through measuring the total area of the tea plantations for each household. Then for example, the Thai, the Thai government has clear information about who plants how much tea and where now. So the government would also get the revenue information for taxing, right? Such recorded information plus the construction of roads, water tanks, and so on and so forth has made the original so-called murky border landscape more and more readable, seeable, and legible for the Thai government. So the transfer of agriculture from Taiwan thus has been a geopolitical process to actually enhance Thai government's control over its border people and then. So it's kind of an enhancement of Thai state sovereignty. Nonetheless, this geopolitical process has been opened the gate for the Yunnanese Chinese to step into the market economy. So far, we have known that tea as a transplanted crop has its political functions, right? But however, tea is also definitely a cash crop, which has led the North Thai borderlands into the scenarios of the market economy. So two type dimensions to address the issues, the changing market, of Taiwanese style oolong tea and the emerging Thai style oolong tea. So this figure shows that the market demand for Taiwanese oolong tea inside Taiwan in these three decades, 
The green line shows the tea production originally from the tea planted inside Taiwan. The red line shows the export of tea in Taiwan, and the blue, the blue line shows the import of tea from other places to Taiwan. So the import of the tea to Taiwan, largely oolong, has increased a lot. One of the reasons about the increasing volume has mainly due to the increasing consumption of the bubble tea, of course, and other kinds of handshake tea beverages. At the same time, the Chinese tourists who came to Taiwan and took tea as their souvenirs have been another reason of the increasing demand in Taiwan. So you can see the tea production in Taiwan has not been enough to meet the increasing demands mm -hmm. in Taiwan. So in consequences, Taiwanese tea merchants need to import tea, especially oolong from other countries, including the teas from Northern Thailand. However, today, most of the tea merchants in Taiwan due to uh, import the Taiwanese style oolong from Thailand, you, you know, they, 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 they do not import that much tea from Thailand right now. Actually, they import more from Vietnam and I will tell the story in more detail later. Uh, that's mainly because of, you know, the lower cost of the tea produced in Vietnam. So you can directly tell from this figure here, the red line is the volume imported from Vietnam to Taiwan and the blue is from Thailand. So uh, in consequence, they are, you know, the, the Vietnamese Chinese have lost their market in Taiwan right now. They are now struggling over producing their own Thai style oolong tea for the market. I also call it kind of a de-Taiwanization of their tea industry. So for example, they are not just thinking about Taiwan and China. Actually, they have the ambition to get into the global market by receiving, for example, the organic certification for exporting their tea to countries in Europe and North America. Also, they are engaged with the development of leisure agriculture to boost the tourism at North Thai border. From this perspective, an emerging of the so-called green entrepreneurship mm -hmm. has been gradually practiced within the Yunnanese Chinese community, but there will be another chapter story. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so the chapter conclusion here, through the story I have just told, I argue that the process of turning the KNT soldiers into farmers of Thai citizens is actually a process of territorialization. Based on that, I argue territory is both political and economic. Mm -hmm. Tea or agriculture in general has been the materialization of this process. Take tea as an example. I regard tea as the agent to transform the murky border landscape into legible terrains and lands. So there are two intertwined dimensions here, tea as a transplanted crop and tea as a cash crop. So tea as a transplanted crop is a political action for territorialization. It turns the murky border landscape into legible territory for the state sovereignty. The purpose, of course, is for the maintenance of order. Tea, as also a cash crop, is a uh, strategy for economic deterritorialization and then re-territorialization. It opens the rigid political boundaries to merge the borderlands at, nor North Thai at, at Northern Thailand into the rules of the regional market economy. However, the tea transfer from Taiwan to Southeast Asian highlands has also boosted the bordering process between Taiwan, Vietnam, and Thailand, right? So let's now go to the Vietnam chapter. Here, I would like to focus on the Vietnam, you know, the, 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 the paradox of being uh, the authentic local, focusing on the tea trade and the dilemma of, of boundary drawing between Vietnam and Taiwan. Again, here's the chapter outline. I will first contextualize my research in the relationship and debate between global and local agrofood production and consumption to briefly reconsider the politics of scale in bordering process. Then I propose border as the theoretical approach to bridge 
the conversations between agro-food geography and political geography. For rethinking the meaning and the material effects of so-called local food production and consumption. So after the short description of my research site and methods, I will then proceed with my empirical data to tell the story about the dilemma between Taiwan and Vietnamese tea today. Okay, I think um, we all live in a world with food production and consumption deeply embedded in the context of globalization. So this map, you know, shows how the pork, beef, and poultry have traveled and consumed in the global scale, right? The other thing would be Starbucks. The like Starbucks in Taiwan is like so popular. You can, you know, you know, just step into a Starbucks in, especially in Taipei, like in the street corner, you will see Starbucks and McDonald's. Okay, oh, no. so 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 put them in the more general categories that you know, coffee and uh, the American food, uh, fast food culture. The two classic examples to demonstrate how we have lived in era of food globalization. But at the same time, the effects of, uh, resulted from food globalization, such as the food safety at consumption side, labor justice in the production side, has made people to be more aware of the negative outcomes of the globalized food system. And then we try to reconsider the value of the so-called local production and consumption, like here, for example, the farmer's markets, mm -hmm. something like that, right? So in accordance from the global to the local has been a demand for re-specialization of the agro-food system, focusing on the local food system as an alternative and oppositional force to counter the trend of food globalization. So everything sounds great, right? So <laughs> what's the problem, okay? So that's the problem, okay? So the local as uh, in current food movement, against globalization has been a common label in the emerging food initiative and aiming to be alternative to the global. However, the so-called local could be also a scalar trap that only romanticized the production and consumption at a homogenized local scale without looking into its diversity and politics. So this chapter, therefore, aim to be reconsider the uh, relocalization of agro-food production and consumption through understanding the politics of border drawing, as well as the scale politics in so-called the local food system, especially in uh, the local tea production in the Taiwanese and Vietnamese context. Okay. So let's go a little bit deeper here. Uh, because of the damages caused by food globalization, the movement of the relocalization of food production and consumption could aim to create a strong protective local food system, right, with a really hard and static boundary, for example, the geographical identification for pursuing and so-called authentic local food production. But at the same time, the border of local food system could be dynamic with flows of different people, things and ideas, just like I told you the story, the tea from Taiwan to Northern Thailand, right? So for example, usually the so-called authentic local food has been socially constructed with changing different meanings for different groups of people at different space and time, like the mobility of Taiwanese tea migrating from Taiwan to Northern Thailand and to Vietnam. So geographers, therefore, we have argued, we have to rethink um, the effects concerning the overemphasis on local, which may have blinded the resulting issues of power exclusion in dividing the local versus non-local. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the static and dynamic bordering processes for local food are not an either or choice, mm -hmm. but simultaneously, it, it, it's a kind of a simultaneous, simultaneous forces in complicating the idea of local per se. Both the fixing and flowing factors in defining the local food are always competing and intertwined through the bordering and debordering processes. So we need to, we, we, we need a new approach to bridging the agro-food and border studies here. So take the local as a bordering process in categorizing, in, in categorizing agro-food system 
I specifically use the paradoxical relationship between Taiwanese and Vietnamese tea as the empirical case studies to tell the story. So where and how do I conduct my research? <laughs> so it's kind of a teamwork. My graduate students and I as a research team do our field research both in Taiwan and Vietnam. We use the ethnographic data uh, to, to you know, tell the story. In Vietnam, the main research sites are Lam Dong province at, south, at, 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 at the south and Lao Gai province at the north. Just, you know, you can see the map here. So in these two places, many tea varieties and processing techniques are also transferred from Taiwan, okay? So where many, you know, Taiwanese tea entrepreneurs are also doing their business there. But why are there Taiwanese tea varieties, processing technologies, and tea companies in Vietnam? So in short, during 1990s, our former president of Taiwan, Li Denghui, pushed the so-called South War policy in Chinese, Nanxiang Zhengzi, in order to divert more Taiwan's investment from China to Southeast Asia. Under this policy context, a group of Taiwanese entrepreneurs and tea merchants started their tea plantations and production in Vietnam, especially at, at the province of Lam, Lam Dong. Okay. So instead of using the tea trees originally brewed in Vietnam, these Taiwanese entrepreneurs and tea merchants transplanted tea trees of improved varieties from Taiwan. Additionally, they also brought along the whole package or processing te techniques from Taiwan, including machines, processing know-how, plantation management, so on and so forth. In other words, this group of Taiwanese tea planters, tea merchants in Vietnam, they believe they are also producing Taiwanese tea, okay, in Vietnam. So they are producing Taiwanese tea in Vietnam. So that's what they believe, okay. Additionally, as the figure shows here, the same, the same figure, right? Um, since 1990s, the volume of tea imports from other countries to Taiwan has gradually increased, while the volume of tea produced inside Taiwan has gradually reduced to the bottom, right? So paradoxically, while the tea produced inside Taiwan has reached the bottom volume, the demand for so-called an authentic Taiwanese tea has sub substantially increased due to many reasons. One important factor is the significant increase of the Chinese mainlanders tourists who have regarded Taiwanese oolong tea as the finest tea represented so-called authentic Taiwanese food culture. Hmm. So as the graph shows here, the red lines demonstrates the increasing Chinese tourists to Taiwan before the year of 2015. After the year of 2015, the number has substantially declined due to the increasing political tension between China and Taiwan. And actually the Chinese government has reduced the number of the Chinese tourists bit visiting Taiwan. Mm. But meanwhile, bubble tea is important, okay? <laughs> so for the Taiwanese people, the bubble tea has become kind of an everyday drinking that also substantially increased the, the demand for tea. Also, bubble tea has become a symbol of Taiwan to export another so-called authentic Taiwanese food culture worldwide. So we need lots of tea leaves to produce bubble tea and other similar everyday Taiwanese uh, tea drinkings. In short, so the decreasing local production and increasing local consumption has made Vietnam tea as a compensation to meet the market demand for the so-called authentic local Taiwanese tea, both oolong tea for the tourism and bubble tea for the everyday drinking. Hmm. As a result, those Taiwanese entrepreneurs and tea companies who transfer tea varieties and processing techniques to Vietnam have occupied a niche to export their tea produced in Vietnam for the market demand in Taiwan. Hmm. So this figure shows again, right? So the increasing import of Vietnam tea to Taiwan here. However, this does challenge the emerging force for the so-called relocalization of food system in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. While those Taiwanese who have produced tea with Taiwanese tea variety and technology 
outside Taiwan, actually, they take themselves as part of the producers of so-called the authentic Taiwanese tea. But for those who produce tea inside Taiwan, they have anxiety regarding the increasing import of tea from other countries, especially from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. First, recent, an emerging discourse regarding the local food is to take the label of you know, local as a solution to a lot of food safety problems caused by food globalization, right? So in accordance, in tea production specifically, the local has been thought as a kind of a rigid de definition of the local is 100% produced inside Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So it become a kind of um, really strong local de de defensive, uh, de local defense, mm -hmm. okay, for so-called the local Taiwanese tea. Moreover, many don't take the Taiwanese style tea produced in Vietnam as part of local Taiwan tea, even though the tea variety and processing techniques are all from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Therefore, notwithstanding that the tea produced inside Taiwan has decreased without the capacity to meet the increase in market demand, many still take any tea importation, including those from Vietnam, as so-called inauthentic mm -hmm. material against the value of so-called pure Taiwan tea, which re represent not just about tea, it's also a representation of Taiwanese people's identity. Mm -hmm. So as the picture shows, the mixture of the local tea leaves of Taiwan with those from Vietnam paradoxically won a renowned tea com competition in Taiwan, and then which create a lot of serious controversy mm -hmm. about the competition. So why is that? Why, why we, we Taiwanese people, why, why, what kind of things we are, caring about. So in Taiwan, the local level is not just about tea or any other kind of food per se, but for a purified Taiwan identity. Taiwan politically has been struggled for a localized identity that, dif dif uh, that differentiates from the Chinese identity. A so-called local label could easily become a national pride to enhance the collective sense of the unique localness that does not relate to, to China or any other places in the world. So this anxiety of being local turns into a local protectionism for sustaining a pure local culture, including tea culture. Even though the bubble tea culture has been regarded as one of the authentic Taiwan tea culture, which keeps demanding more Im importation of foreign tea outside Taiwan, including Vietnam, the anxiety for keeping a pure local still turned into a force to draw a boundary for local Taiwanese tea by denouncing the quality of tea from Vietnam, even those tea have been produced by Taiwanese tea producers with Taiwanese tea varieties and pro pro processing technologies. So as the picture shows, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, in Taiwan, the local production of tea has declined due to a variety of reasons, like the increasing production costs, aging labors at production areas, so on and so forth. Nevertheless, the market demand of tea has increased mainly because of the increasing consumption of bottled tea, hand, handmade tea drinks of uh, the, the trend stores, the bubble tea, you know, the tea for the touristic souvenirs, the kind of things, as a result, Demand for imported tea, mainly from Vietnam, has increased for meeting the growing consumption. However, re recently, the public awareness of the protection for local agriculture has also emerged under the ethos of the local food system. In short, the emerging ethos of local food system in Taiwan has somehow created a discourse of local authenticity in agriculture, including tea production. In consequence, the decreasing local tea production in Taiwan has been labeled as the only authentic tea product of Taiwan. So the local here becomes a symbol rooted in a distinct place, so-called Taiwan. Nevertheless, the sustaining of the tea market in Taiwan does need the import of tea from Vietnam. Historically, the transfer of, Thai, the, the transfer of Taiwan tea variety and processing techniques has expanded to Vietnam and other countries. These have paradoxically become the major source for producing more demand for Taiwan oolong tea overseas and creating a bubble tea culture regarded as the food culture originated from Taiwan to the world. So from this perspective, local become a mechanism 
with strong spatial mobility without static boundaries. So what is local? Maybe we have to think more, right? So how do we think about that in Taiwan? Yes, what is local is more than the meaning of localness in Taiwan. In fact, T has closely related to Taiwan's food nationalism. Local tea in Taiwan, whether tra traditional high mountain tea or the modern bubble tea, has been the icon representing Taiwan's food culture for centuries. When people talk about local, usually lo the localness conveys ideas of organic, environmentally friendly, that kind of things. Yet, in the Taiwanese context of the food production and consumption, Local also has strong association with nationalism, mm -hmm. especially around tea. So indeed, the under my status of Taiwan as an internationally recognized sovereignty of an independent country has meant that both the government and the civil society have tried to create a distinct simple symbolic order, I, I should say, to, de to define the localness of Taiwan tea. This means that only tea made inside Taiwan can claim itself to be local Taiwanese tea. The distinct symbolic border that defines the localness of Taiwan tea alongside broader forms of food nationalism has also provided a market strategy, mar marketing uh, strategy for the expansion of Taiwanese tea business outside Taiwan. However, the mixture of localness and food nationalism of Taiwan has made you know, those running tea businesses outside Taiwan come from challenges. So if you guys remember you know, the Hong Kong protest in the year of 2019, the food nationalism and the bordering processes you know, is not just between Taiwan and Vietnam. So some of the leading Taiwanese bubble tea brands have become entangled in the conflict between Hong Kong and China. Yi, Yi Fang Fruit Tea, for, in, for, for instance, which originated from Taiwan and now famous for using local tea and fruit materials, has run up against consumers from both sides of the Taiwan Strait. The entire, the entire storm of began in, um, you, you know, when, when, when Yifang Fu Tea closed one of its Hong Kong shops for a day and put up a sign that said in Chinese, stand together with Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So this post angered Chinese net netizens and consumers, resulting in a worldwide boycott. Mm -hmm. Yifang's following up statement supporting the Chinese policy did not claim the boycott um, in China. Rather, many Taiwanese are now stirred up too, as they believe that Yifang betrayed Taiwanese local symbol and food nationalism. Mm. So this story echoes the story of my book, which suggests that the superficial binary opposition uh, with the con uh, contestations over food nationalism of Taiwan, Taiwan tea has been complicated with border crossing mobility of tea. So conclusion. In this chapter, I use the example of tea trade between Taiwan and Vietnam to demonstrate that the, the, the complicated scenario. The origins of the tea trade between Vietnam and Taiwan lies in the South World policy launched in the 1990s by Taiwanese pre President Li Denghui to divert Taiwanese outward investment from China to South, Southeast Asia. In this policy, Taiwanese entrepreneurs and tea merchants established tea plantations and factories in Vietnam, but crucially, instead of using local Vietnamese tea trees, these Taiwanese tea entrepreneurs and tea merchants introduced new tea trees varieties developed in Taiwan, as well as the full package of processing techniques from Taiwan. Okay. So in other words, even if they were located in Vietnam, these entrepreneurs believe Mm -hmm. They are producing Taiwanese tea in Taiwan, but uh, in Vietnam. So go back to the end of the whole book. Through the tea, I reposition Taiwan within a cross-regional connection based on the agricultural transfer, tea in particular, between Taiwan, China, and Southeast Asian highlands. I intend to reconsider my own country, Taiwan, from the perspective of Taiwan inside out by following the mobility, 
The migration, the migration of Taiwanese tea, including tea species, processing know-how, and people. So theoretically, I aim to reconsider the role of tea as a transnational political, economic, and a non-human actor, mm -hmm. and its encounter with people's everyday lives to reconceptualize the kind of uh, frontier dynamics, the territorial politics, and bordering process in Asia. As such, some of the bigger questions I have proposed about Taiwan, ta about Taiwanese tea here are, have people been seeking a symbolically distinct but spatially porous food icon under the entanglement between local and national Taiwan? And where exactly does the border of the so-called Taiwanese tea lie? Beyond this, I ask, how and why people draw borders around local food within the complex struggles over food nationalism. So I hope you to keep pondering these questions with a five cup of tea with me. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I want to show off, as a geographer, I want to show off the picture here. I, I was standing exactly at the borderline between Thailand and Myanmar. Do you see the, you, you know, the wire there? Yeah, yeah so the, you know, the, the other side would be Myanmar and the tea production side, tea plantation side would be uh, Thailand. And you see a border control station at my back. Right, so that's you know this kind of a geographer's. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? So, if anyone would like to raise their hand, uh, we have a couple minutes for questions. Actually, have a pretty empirical question. Can people taste a difference between the tea that is physically produced within Taiwan and the Taiwanese processed tea that's produced in Vietnam? Or is that something that, you know, is there a terroir thing? Is that psychological? Okay, or, yeah. Know, I'm very curious about that. And that's a really good question. Okay, to be honest, I cannot tell. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I, I still believe that people produce really fine tea in Vietnam, both in Vietnam and Taiwan. Huh. But um, for the local producers in Taiwan, okay, they right. believe they can recognize yeah. the difference. Yeah. And actually, I, um, I did some experiments. You know, <laughs> it, you know I, I, I actually proposed the challenges. Yeah. You know, to my 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 informants, and they were so confident, saying, "Hey, okay." And um, um, well, I I should say that um, well, some people amazingly they did they okay. they did tell the difference, hmm. but maybe because you know tea is complicated because tea is not just you know where you plant the tea. Hmm. Tea is also all about the processing techniques. So actually, um, I think, in my opinion, the processing techniques actually plays a more critical role mm -hmm. here. So um, some, sometimes people can tell the difference. I think it's because of the difference of the processing techniques. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I won't say it's the difference between Taiwan and Vietnam. I think it's the difference between different people. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, uh, but I think it's still a myth mm -hmm. for me. And, uh, but I think interestingly is that my analysis is all based on, you know, why people care mm -hmm. the kind of authenticity. I'm not trying to figure out you know, truth or false, right? The, the, the main purpose is that why people try to, you know, draw the boundary between Vietnamese tea and Taiwanese tea, okay? And in Taiwanese context, of course, it's, 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 it's all about identity, mm -hmm. just like I told you. But, um, but at the same time, identity is also a complicated issue that the group of people in North, Northern Thailand, they originally had a really close relationship with, with Taiwan, mm -hmm. right? So right now their identity is still kind of changing, mm -hmm. okay? They are Thai citizens right now, 
And especially for the younger generation, they don't care about the identity politics between Taiwan and, 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 and China. They just want to do the business. Right. But for the older generation, they kind of have the kind of a struggling over the kind of identity uh, association with China or Taiwan right now, because Taiwan has been more and more trying to build up our own sense of identity you know, far away from China. Mm -hmm. But this group of people in, 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 in Northern Thailand, they, they still have a really close relationship with, with China, mm -hmm. but at the same time we, with Taiwan too. Mm -hmm. And but and so for the group of people in Vietnam, okay, they are all Taiwanese. Yeah. So they, they, they will be frustrated that we are all Taiwanese and we build up all the tea industries in Vietnam, try to expand so-called the tea industry of Taiwan. Yeah. But inside the Taiwanese society, try to you know, impose a really negative um, meanings, sayings upon this group of people. Say they, so they would be really frustrated, but at the same time, they also try to keep the Taiwanese tea identity mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. So they are also struggling this kind of Taiwanese identity both inside Taiwan and outside Taiwan. But at the same time, it's Taiwanese people's everyday life. Right. Because all of the complicated history between Taiwan and China, mm -hmm. and right now it's also you know geopolitical things here, right? So so the identity issues in Taiwan is is I would say in, interesting, but it's also our everyday struggles. Yeah. Yeah, we try to claim to the world that hey, Taiwanese people is different. Mm -hmm. Taiwan is a kind of a, you know, a country, for example, here. But uh, I try to use tea to tell the story. So the identi identity issue is not something up there. Mm -hmm. It's not just something, you know, political debates up there. It's our everyday life. Drinking tea is part of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Thank you for first giving a fantastic presentation. My uh, question is, so a lot of emotional significance is placed on tea as um, a product. And so my question is, why is it in some countries, for example, I'll do uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. palm sugar, mm -hmm. it's not as, I feel not emotionally significant to them as an export, it's rather just Cash crop. Mm -hmm. And why do you think some cultures place significance on certain exports and products from their country compared to tea? Yeah, right. compared to tea, yeah. Yeah, I would say because tea is kind of uh, Taiwanese people, we are so proud of our tea. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the reason. If you come to Taiwan, mo most of the gift you will receive pro pro probably tea. No. <laughs> people will give you tea as a kind of a souvenir representing Taiwan. It's interesting because right now I'm at the National Humanities Centers, right? And the president of the humanity, National Humanities Centers, Robert Newman, he actually went to Taiwan like, three times. And he told me that every time he got the tea, <laughs> Taiwanese people try to, you know, tea is it's somehow equals Taiwan. So, uh, so that's another reason that when bubble tea became so popular, we were so proud of that kind of things. And we love people to drink bubble teas. Mm -hmm. We feel like the whole, so you know the existence of Taiwan, even though you guys, when you drink about bubble tea, you don't think about Taiwan. I don't believe all of the consumers care that much, mm -hmm. right? But Taiwanese people do care. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a identity struggles actually make these kind of things like, like everyday practices inside Taiwan. So I kind of, as a Taiwanese, I understand that. So I try to write a book yeah. to tell the story. Yeah. yeah, when we drink bubble tea for Taiwanese people, you are drinking Taiwanese identity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, you don't have to care. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you know, it's a great story. I hope yeah. you can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the book uh, is released, I hope you, you, yeah, a lot of more details are actually will be inside my book. Yeah. If we have time for one more question. I have a question. Okay, I'll um, have you. Yeah. Have you noticed a difference in pride compared to like small family owned tea companies compared to big mobiles? 
and mm -hmm. how that affects um, the local community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as they fluctuate between production sites. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 mean in in Taiwan? Yeah. In Taiwan. Okay. So the agriculture system in Taiwan is is mostly the small holders. Mm -hmm. We actually in Taiwan not not like here in the U.S. United States, we don't have that the big agriculture companies. Mm -hmm. A lot of the tea makers, they are small holders. They, 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 they create their own tea and uh, sell their own tea. But of course, we got like, the bigger companies. Yes, and uh, uh, I would say um, Taiwanese people right now, just like I told you, because of the kind of, we try to focus on so-called local production. And we also try to revitalize the household agriculture culture in Taiwan. So actually we value the, the household production of tea more than the tea produced by the big companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but bubble tea will be another issue. The household production of oolong tea, we appreciate that. But for the bubble tea, we take it as another scale. We take it as a kind of a global scale. Huh. So actually our government, including Taiwanese go government, try to invest, you know, to build up the big car company to, to make the bubble tea industry is kind of a global industry. So household production of the bubble tea would not do that. We need like the investment, you know, money, you know, to do that kind of thing. So I would say there's no one answer to that. It's still like we have different scenarios between, at least between oolong tea and bubble tea. Yeah. Great, thanks. Okay. And um, if you have any other questions, we can continue them um, in our reception, which will be located in 327 of the reading room. And we ask the um, faculty from geography and planning to please help move the food from the kitchen to the reading room. So if the faculty would be kind enough to meet us up in the kitchen, we'll meet everybody else in the reading room. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.